thanks for joining me again. This is just the large Ron Ransom hike. It's the, uh, it's the 45 mil one if you're not sure when you're searching around. I buy mine on eBay. Right. They do last an eternity. I mean, I'll get through a few, several hundred paintings before I have to use another one. This is um, Rossiana, all the way down to the bottom. Something like that, a bit more up there, and a bit more up there. Just dipping the tips in just to loosen the old thing up, the old goat hairs that these are. I'm going ultramarine, a bit of Payne's grey, just to give it a bit of drama. And then just something like that. Reload the brush. Bang it in from either side. And then a bit more down there. Quite a high horizon line. It's going to become about there. So that's why I need to come in from either side just there to try and create some sort of light. Although it would look better. Imagine that's going to be the water if it was above. Just so that the sort of matched. I don't know if I've explained that very well but that's a sort of general gist of what I'm trying to do. Um, I don't think it needs anything more. No, shall I dry it now? I think I'll carry on. I know some people get a bit irritated with the sound of the air dryer so I'll try not to use it although it's I'm trying not to use it anyway to be honest because I'd like to paint out in the garden, get a bit of nice background. And obviously I wouldn't have well unless I run out of run a big long extension, I don't be able to use the hairdresser then anyway. Hair dryer. Plus if I'm out, I mean there's a there's a nice hill just up the road I could do some painting from. So I'm trying to get it out of the habit of using the hair dryer because I'm using it as a sort of safety sort of mechanism when you see the paint coming down you can just dry it to stop it. So these are distant hills going in. Right up, right up the top. And something like that. And there's a few more on the other side. Making sure, just trying to get it all level. Um, back in the day, I did uh, some people put masking tape across just to get a really nice level horizon line. But I tend not to. Well, I haven't. I haven't used masking tape for a long time, to be honest with you. Very long time. As long as it's there or thereabouts. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just dipping the tips just to loosen those hairs up again. You can see how the raw sienna is sort of coming off onto the brush. And there's a few colours on there. Because what I want, I want it, um, I want this a bit stronger now to contrast against the sort of lighter, lighter tones of the uh, background. I want this a bit stronger because we're coming forward slightly. Nice. You can see how that's a little bit stronger. Yes, good enough like that. And then in front of that, I want a bit of into the sort of far. This is on, on the other side of the uh, of the water now. Going raw sienna, you can put a bit of burnt uh, ombre in there as well. Sort of bang, brown of the of the land. Burnt ombre. That's where the water is just there now, so I want to make sure that that's nice and level. Just 
Let's get this nice and dark first. I just want to try and just level this off a bit. Just get this level. So you've always got the uh, the brush sort of parallel with the bottom of the paper. So I think I think that'll do for the far bank now. Now then, skip it over the water now onto the near side bank. Now there's not much water visible, so um, pushing it right up. And then there, something like that, and it's back up again. You see, I'm just push, pushing the airs up just slightly, just so it looks. You can just looks as if there's a little something growing on the edge of the, of the water there. Something sticking up. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna clean the brush now. Let's try and get back to some lighter colour. So let's just go raw sienna and just bring that across, see what that looks like. And again, just dipping the tips in the water, almost just pure water now, just catching the bottom of the paint on there. Just to try and preserve that sort of lighter area that's coming down. And let's just bring that right down the bottom, just wet that, wet that a little bit. Yeah, that burnt umber on the side. And then now on the right hand side now there's a bit of there is a little bit of grass. So I'm just going lemon yellow. It's coming down. A little bit of pain's grey as well, just a really rich green colour. That's coming down there. Just to the edge of that lighter area down there. Just clean the brush a bit, let's just lighten the colour a bit. Back into that lemon yellow. You see how the leaf green's a lot lighter there. Pull this tight, the paper has stretched slightly. So just refix it with these clips on the right hand side using these ball dog clips. It's a lot easier than taping the paper to the board. Some people, mind you, then you, you can pre stretch it if you want. Now, I do now, I could do with the paper being a bit dry now, so I'm going to have to use the air dryer. Get it a bit dry just so that it really comes off nice and thick now. I don't want too much water. And you can see now if we just go into this burnt umber ultramarine. I mean it's just my little things just grabbing there. And you can even get your fingernail in as well and just flick bits up here and there. Very little water on the brush, see it's pretty dry. I can just go raw sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine, and just where the things are just growing there. And obviously, get smaller and smaller as they go off into the distance. So what I'd do, do the do the neater ones first, the big ones, and then as the paint's coming off your brush, you can move further and further forward.
Yeah, there's a few. Now we have got. There's um, a little tree growing up there. So let's just pop that up. Which of the hike, you want to get the finer branches. You can use the hike brush, just to, not the hike brush, the rigger brush, I mean, just to do those finer branches coming up on either side. Just you hold it, hold it, see how I'm holding it quite low down the handle, just try and get those random shapes, random effects. bit more water. Obviously this brush holds, you're going from one extreme to the other, this brush holds very little water so you'll have to keep reloading it. And then once I've got these uh, twigs and things on, I'm just going to Fairly, fairly dry, and then just just using a fairly dry brush, and then just using the corner just to pop on a little bit of foliage. Try and get at least a couple of colours on there for a bit of variation. Right, now we've also got a few trees down there. I'm just going to flick up like that. Scrape to the finger now just to put the branches in. Obviously these are getting quite far away so I want to try and keep them as subtle as possible. That'll do. bushy thing growing over there and just switching back to the rig just put on the finer finer um, twigs Using the corner of the brush just to pop in the uh, foliage. Flicking up there with the with the brush, just make it look as if there's loads of bits of grass. And then use the car there as well, just a few more bits of grass up. So oh. you don't, I don't really like to do much. I try try and keep the scraping just to one area. Now I've done the scraping there, so 
try not to do it there. Everything's got a bit muddy on the brush so Trying to get rid of most of those things I've just done, so I think we're nearly there. Um, possibly, I'll just get a rock in. Put it in dark. That's fairly thick, so I know I can scrape this straight, and it's not going to fill in. I think I'm going to leave it for that now, with maybe the exception of a couple of birds flying, flying up in the sky. Just making sure my hands clean so I don't leave a mark anywhere. I'm just finding looking for a light area in the sky, so I think no, that'll do. One there, one there, one there, one there, that'll do. All that's left now. Pop your name in the corner somewhere. I'm going to call that one done. So. Let's see what it looks like with the uh, with the mounts on. So this is our painting with the mounts on. So if we go in and have a closer look at it, I've got a very high horizon line this time. So I haven't done too much uh, work with the sky, but as you, I've tried to create sort of darker areas and lighter areas, and then tried to uh, reflect the light into the water. See what I, was try what I was trying to explain earlier on in the painting was how I, I, I wanted to get this light below the light, but it, it, I, I'm picking flies there. See the distant land put in using the same colour as the sky, and then we've got slightly stronger tone as we come forward, and then we've got this burnt umber, raw sienna colour as we come down into the uh, far side of the river bank, um, all the way across. Try to keep maintaining sort of lighter areas and darker areas, trying to provide contrast throughout the painting. Um, especially like here where the where the uh, this tree line is, and then like shadowy area behind it. Then you can see where I've scraped out with the fingernail, just to suggest the trunks as they work their way up the side of the hill. A couple of trees over on this far side, just using the hate brush put in simply and then using the rigger brush just to put in some of the lighter branches then if you remember I just used the corner of the height just to put in a bit of colour on the foliage always use, use at least a couple of colours to help provide variation same again on the other side just to help frame the picture really we've got the land sloping down here there's a rock here and I put it with the uh, using a piece of card just scrapes it in. Don't fuss about it with them, just, just scrape them in and then leave them. Because nine times out of ten you fiddle, you'll ruin it. Well thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed what you saw, please subscribe if you haven't done already. You can help me out by liking, sharing, leave your comments in the video description. Keep practicing, happy painting, and I'll see you again soon.